من جبل الشايخ لعرسال قدامك مبايه كله حشيشه كله حشيشه مش حشيشه هاش Traditionally, Lebanon has been one of the hot spots for hemp and hashish production in the Middle East. The first evidence of production dates back several centuries with the famed Baka Valley, the cultural hub of Lebanese hemp and cannabis for growing. Boasting a temperate climate with soil conditions that are considered optimal for cannabis and hemp cultivation, the Baka Valley has a worldwide reputation for producing some of the world's best hash. Until about 1970, Lebanon was known for its prosperity, being the financial center of the entire area and at the time, Lebanon came to be known as the Switzerland of the Middle East. However, hit by a bloody civil war between 1975 and 1990, the economic situation has not been the same since then, partly encouraging many growers to take the risk of choosing hashish as their main source of income. According to local farmers, a mere acre of cannabis cultivated can yield up to 100 kilograms of hash. Traditional Cannabis Cultivation in Lebanon The debate about where dry sieving cannabis resin to obtain hashish was born is as interesting as it is historical. Afghanistan or Lebanon? Where did dry screened hashish come from? Traditionally, hashish has been obtained by rubbing fresh flowers. The original name and original way to make charas. However, with the boom in demand from the 15th century, dry screening became the most popular method to produce hashish, being much more effective than the previous one. Its only drawback, it was difficult to use this method in humid areas such as northern India or Nepal. So it was in areas such as Afghanistan or Lebanon where this method of separating the resin glands really came to life and eventually became the main production technique of hashish. Although Lebanon has never been one of the main cannabis producing countries, traditionally, and also today, it has been one in terms of hashish production, which shows that most of the cannabis grown in the region is destined for the production of resin concentrate. Before Morocco became the undisputed king in terms of tons produced per year, Afghanistan and Lebanon were fighting for number one on the list in terms of top hashish producing countries, where Pakistan and India also usually appear. Of course, Lebanon became one of the most must-visit stops for the pilgrims on the hippie hash trail during the 1960s and 1970s. It was a route followed by backpackers, adventurers, and ultimately Western tourists traveling from the Middle East to Central Asia visiting the main cannabis and hashish producing areas. Thanks to these pilgrims, Lebanese hashish reached a level of fame comparable to that of ne Nepalese temple balls or the Afghan product, especially in terms of the Lebanese red and blonde. The Bekaa Valley Flowers of Paradise. The Beka Valley, which in Lebanese Arabic is pronounced Ba'a, is a region in eastern Lebanon that stretches from the Litani River to the Syrian border. It is known for its hot climate and fertile land, making it an important agriculture area in Lebanon. The Beka Valley is known to be a producing region of barley, wheat, fruits, and vegetables. And interestingly enough, it is also famous for its wine production as it has several wineries and a winemaking tradition that dates back to the time of the Phoenicians. In terms of clandestine production, the Baka Valley has historically been an important area for cannabis cultivation and hashish production in Lebanon, despite being illegal. Poverty and lack of economic opportunities, diaspora from neighboring Syria and Palestine and some rural Baka Valleys have led some farmers to produce hashish for a livelihood. While the Lebanese government has been laxer at certain times, in certain years, it has taken steps to combat hashish production in Baka, something that remains a major challenge. According to reports, most of Lebanon's hashish production is concentrated in this region, known for its hot climate and fertile soils. As we know, hashish production is illegal in Lebanon, although the authorities often turn a blind eye as many rural communities in the Baka Valley have traditionally been economically dependent on hashish production. The situation worsened for growers during the Syrian crisis starting in 2011, as various armed groups fought to gain control of production and thus finance their activities. 
As mentioned many times, Lebanese hashish was one of the best concentrates of this type that could be found. With its characteristic reddish color, its spicy and earthy flavor, and the powerful effect it causes. The Resin Powder Collection This is a description of a Lebanese cannabis harvest from 1974. Harvesters enter the field stripped to the waist and begin the process of severing the ripe stalks at their base. Rough wooden carts are dragged into the fields on the heels of their harvesters, and the plants are placed into these carts alternating top to bottom. As each cart is filled, it is hitched to a donkey and driven off to a nearby village. In the center of each village, there are specifically prepared drying beds of hard, packed clay surrounded by low walls for protection from the wind, whitewashed so that the heat from the sun is trapped and reflected onto the piles of plants in the center of the floor. The cut cannabis lies on these drying beds for about two weeks, alternately baking in the sun but day by day, and soaking in the light dew of the nights. Each plant is turned daily and care is taken that no plant remains on the bottom of a pile for more than a day, for this could lead to an onset of a molding process which would spoil the flavor and ultimately the potency of the leaves. Harvest timing is important to the appearance and the potency of the cannabis resin. The color of resin glands changes from clear to reddish amber as they mature. More mature resin is more potent and darker in color. It follows the later harvest which produced darker red resin of higher potency, hence the reputation for superior quality held by red Lebanese hashish. The longer the plants stand in the field, the drier they become and the easier they are to store. However, if the farmer waits too long, then the resin can be lost. Don't wait, don't wait, don't wait. Want to be soft? I've been mad, tizzy, 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 na surta. Don't wait, don't wait, don't wait. Don't wait, don't wait, don't wait. Don't wait, don't wait, don't wait. My bad, the ice.